You know, as a, as a Pluralsight author, every so often you get these objectives that are kind of silly, but you have to actually walk through them if you want to ensure you touch on every single thing for exams like the 70-411. Admittedly, this was not a terribly exciting module here, but it did talk a bit, and maybe perhaps a bit more detail, about the things that we've already configured in setting up that wizard for our VPN configuration here through our NPS server. What have we talked about in this module? We have configured our connection request policies, or at least explored a little more deeply the things that could be configured as part of a connection request policy. We also took a look at the network policies specifically for VPN clients and a couple of the specific configurations for multi-length and bandwidth allocation and IP filters, encryption, and IP addressing that you might want to configure maybe if you didn't do it correctly the first time when you set things up in the wizard. And then a very short look there at importing and exporting NPS policies, both inside the graphical user interface and with the PowerShell commandlet. Coming up next is our final module, our final objective, and our final topic here for the 70-411. That has to do with network access protection, which as a topic is kind of bittersweet because as I mentioned before, network access protection is deprecated in Windows Server 2012 R2. So it's one of those oddball topics where you're gonna need to know it for the exam, but probably never for any use in a production sense. For that reason, we'll go through an implementation of network access protection. I'll show you how it looks. I'll also talk a bit about perhaps why Microsoft has deprecated and sunsetted this technology, mainly because it was a technology that had some great hooks into it that maybe didn't get the third-party attentions that Microsoft was anticipating. We'll talk about things like system health validators and health policies, and we'll configure NAP enforcement two different ways, in one way using DHCP, and another way for the VPN configuration we've been dealing with so far. That bittersweet final conversation is the topic for our next module coming up.